is entitled The Unfortunate Reality. And I quote from Ram Das, it is important to expect nothing, to take every experience, including the negative ones, as merely steps on the path and to proceed. And I quote, old habits are hard to break, unquote. That's what they always say, whoever they are. I must agree. I decided that it's because those old paradigms are carved so deep into one's being that it seems that those are the only path to take. So, unless you take the time and effort to carve new ways of being, again and again, you may find yourself on the path the same path. Unless one is forced to assimilate new rules and accommodate new systems. For most people, this is an unhappy consequence of bad choices. A negative environment, too few options, lack of financial resources, or someone resourceful with an unpleasant agenda. In this case, it hurts to be it. Unquote. It. It's like some hide and seek in a time warp. A satanic politician willing to sacrifice anyone less fortunate to carve their niche, will step on your neck to rise over your head. Basically, some people exhibit a callous disregard for the suffering of others at least eight hours a day as a prerequisite of employment. Some work overtime because they love their job. If you have the misfortune of being what they are working at, so what? The invisible in society are usually the disenfranchised or children or, and elderly people. A lack of resources is generally regarded as a lack of power. Those without power are those without respect. Most people equate money with power, but most people seldom see beyond the obvious. True power is the indomitable spirit and the unswerving will to not only survive, but to succeed. Caesar said, I quote, Veni Vidi Vici, Unquote. I came, I saw, I conquered. Unfortunately, his game was a losing proposition because he overplayed divide and conquer. Any management worth their salt will have to admit that inclusion is a skill to master. No one can construct without a plan. No one can succeed without a goal. And no one can maintain an organization without effective conflict resolution and an exit strategy. Quote, just count backwards from 50, unquote. The nurse commanded as she jammed the sodium pentothal syringe into the intravenous assembly. Eyes were hard to keep open at 35 and impossible at 25. The bright lights overhead dimmed appropriately. The last thing I heard was, she's under. My only thought was, how did I get here? It was a trip through a time tunnel into a netherworld of never leaving till someone, they, them, 
the ones with the keys said so. The American Correctional System Analysis and Theory. In order for the system of correction of criminal behavior to be truly effective and equitable, it must adhere to the highest ethical standards. How can a society that perpetuates social injustice in terms of racial, economic, class-based, caste systems ever hope to profess to measure up to the ideals portrayed by Lady Justice? In fact, the concept of a justice system that is blind to inequality and bias can never be a reality in an unjust society. Crime itself has been categorized according to offenses, but has it ever been analyzed in terms of prevention? What can we do as a society to correct the cultural climate and infrastructure that encourages, promotes, and reinforces and rewards a system of debilitation, entrapment, imprisonment, lawlessness, and hopelessness. There is no such thing as rehabilitation in the current justice system. Not only is there uh, targeted enforcement, but there is race-based sentencing an encouragement to enter into a dead-end criminal underground subculture as an only option for survival. The sense of community among criminals is so pervasive in our society that it thrives at every socioeconomic, educational, and occupational level. That is why the result of corrupt government and law enforcement, religious institutions, and social services will always carry over into our education from conception to old age. Psychologically, the erosion of our civil liberties, our trust in our appointees to uh, position to convey our societal values and morals has caused us to produce a bumper crop of unjust people in positions of enforcement of maintaining a corrupt and immoral status quo. I don't believe that there is no way to save ourselves from destruction at our own hands. However, it requires more than an unblemished sacrifice. This time, there must be a paradigm shift. We must devote ourselves to looking into the mirror of truth of our own current reality and commit to true change. In other words, repentance. And not just justification of wrongdoing, because that is the way it has always been. That is the soil and the climate that produce the support for every culture and mindset of every genocide, holocaust, and ethnic cleansing campaign ever perpetrated in the world. Let's make a concerted effort to examine ourselves on every level and save ourselves. We cannot continue to warehouse the poor and criminalize the minority that we worked overtime to suppress from empowerment, while at the same time dangling riches before their eyes like kaleidoscope images that can they can never hope to attain by any legal means. Day after day, we see that people rise to power primarily by corrupt and ruthless and moral behavior in the world society. They hold the poor to standards that they never ever intended to adhere to themselves. What good does it do to build prisons when the whole justice system is a self-perpetuating money-making venture? From the police with racist attitudes and agendas to the lawyers paid not to defend, to the prosecutors paid to persecute, to the judges with loyalties to the systems that appointed them to power, to the teachers that taught to some and refused to teach to others, to the governments that allow their children to be prey of peers and authority positions 